Hello and welcome to a new video. In this video I'm going to show you my complete cooking system which I use outdoors for car camping as a base camp kitchen or whenever I want to go somewhere cooking outdoors I take what you can see here. Um, I needed something uh, which I could easily transport, uh, something that is kind of waterproof against elements so this is what i came up with um, i can use these as tables i can use this as uh, chopping boards for my foods and uh, yeah let's begin on the left side uh, this yellow box is actually used in the trunk of my car to store my spare clothing uh, but whenever I need a second table or a chopping board, I can just take it out and uh, use it. On the middle, you can see a smaller box. Um, this is actually my food supply and water supplying box. Uh, I only keep foods and water stored in there. Uh, and the lid on that, uh, the chopping board on that, I use only for smelly foods like uh, yeah, onions or garlic, etc. Um, the blue box actually contains my complete cooking setup uh, we will go through in a minute in detail um, and uh, yeah that is something that I can use in all type of conditions I can use it on fire I can uh, cook on coals I can use spirit burners um, or any type of fluid fuels um, I can uh, cook i can fry i can bake so it is very versatile and it's a big selection or a, a, a rather a mix of products that i combine to create the cook system i need in certain um, situations so if you want to see what's inside um, just stay tuned we will dig into that in a minute okay so here you can see the box uh, with my kitchen stuff uh, with the lid removed you see it's actually filled to the top and uh, yeah um, it's a good mix of many things so um, I think I will just take out one part after another and explain what I use it for okay let's go um, at first I think I should uh, talk a little bit about the fuels that I use and um, the yeah, burners or cooking um, devices that I use with certain type of fuel. Um, yeah, let's start with my most common option. This is uh, like uh, an alcohol burner or spirit burner. Uh, it's very common and uh, I like these because they burn hot and consistent and uh, I can uh, actually measure very uh, accurately uh, how much fuel I need or how much uh, fuel is left. So this is my preferred option when cooking outdoors for camping or car camping, traveling, whatever. Um, I have three of those um, together with these pot stands. So I have actually three, um, yeah, heat sources that I can use at the same time. Um, that makes it very versatile because I can cook, I can fry, I can uh, bake at the same time. Um, so this is my preferred option. Then um, I have, yeah, in here, I, I think I will show it uh, by uh, putting it together, by assembling it, so you get a better idea. This is uh, actually um, a wood gasifier stove. Um, which yeah um, works the way that the um, gases that occur from burning wood will be uh, burned in a second burning process by this uh, burner which makes it actually pretty smoke free and um, as a heat source very efficient and with this, I use uh, tiny little wood pellets. They burn pretty long and I think one filling about an hour and very hot. 
So this is just an alternative um, of fuels that you can use for outdoor cooking. Yeah? These tiny little pellets, I don't want to open it right now because it would create a mess, but that are actually pressed um, wood yeah, pieces, uh, tiny wood pieces and wood dust into a hard form. And yeah, this can be used in this cooker as well as natural uh, wood, of course. Let me assemble this real quick. So this is the top, uh, the, the bottom part uh, where you can see the holes, which uh, is sucked in to the burning chamber when uh, using it. Then we have uh, a middle part like this, um, where you actually have uh, a double wall, uh, yeah, ring uh, container where the air is going inside and outside of the inner rings, uh, the inner holes. So this will create a second burning process, burning the wood gases uh, that you have when you make a fire. So it's very efficient and smoke free, almost. So we put that in. Then, um, yeah, you have a top part, of course, um, where you can, yeah, rest your pots and pans on, but I don't use that too often. So it works like this, and here on here you can put your pot. So, but I actually use that more like a grill, or, a, yeah, I cut to size this uh, computer fan. Um, protection uh, and use it as a grill grate that works nice and uh, of course you can place pans or uh, mugs or pots on here too to cook something up. So this is uh, the system I would use with natural wood um, and these wood pellets but of course you can also uh, take this out put that in the other way around and use it like this with the alcohol burner and then you can use it also with the burner. So that's a pretty neat system. Yeah, and in there I store some cleaning cloth uh, to clean it uh, after use. Then I have cut to size this um, baking sheet. This is actually rated to, I think, 260 degrees. Um, and if there is a yeah, smaller cold bed in here, um, I think this should uh, work um, that you can yeah, use it as a grill mat. Uh, I've never tried that. Um, we will see that in some upcoming videos. If that works or not, we will see. But that's my idea and my conclusion uh, when burning uh, natural fuels such as wood or these compressed uh, pellets. Um, then you have like this little spirit pen, so you could use it uh, also with this, pour some spirit or alcohol in here and light that up and then use it as a normal uh, spirit stove. For lighting the wood, uh, I um, always carry some uh, solid fuel tab tablets uh, which serve as fire starters. So this is this system, I will keep it assembled because throughout my video you will see uh, how I um, use it all together and uh, how it will finally <laughs> make sense at least for me as a um, yeah, suitable outdoor cooking system that will cover all needs and cover all possibilities to uh, burn different fuels. So as you saw you can use the spirit burner in here too, as well as with this system, um, you can use everything together. So next one would be, um, yeah, here I have some more fire starters. Here's some birch bark, which I like to use because it got a nice smell when burning. And in here I also keep um, waterproof um, and uh, protected some more fuel tablets, so solid fuel actually. Yeah, then I have um, this system here. Um, I would like to cook um, with coals in this 
of course you can use the coals in here too um, but i thought uh, that this might uh, be more suitable for it so i have these foldable um ah, uh, wood stoves um, or survival stoves uh, let's call it um, i packed it uh, so that after use i can uh, actually repack it in this so it keeps uh, the dirt a little bit uh, more out of the way so that's why i have these towels in here i put that away real quick so put that over uh, let's assemble this one uh, it works like this you have like four side pieces um, uh, which will actually create a burning chamber and you can rest this um, fire plate in here uh, for example like this or like this so it's a little bit fiddly sometimes but once it's assembled it's really strong and sturdy and it won't tip on you um, so you don't have to be afraid that something is spilling on the floor um, especially let me mention working with uh, fuel uh, fluid fuels like alcohol or spirit uh, you should always take um, uh, a lot of attention to it and be very cautious because once this is burning and tipping over on the floor you uh, you cannot distinguish that actually um, so this is also something dangerous to use um, so using coals or like the, um, the coals of a fire might be uh, a little less uh, dangerous so always keep that in mind please yeah so let's assemble this quick so i have a real solid pot stand um, and something that will also protect my um, heat source from the winds um, i think that is pretty cool i can use that also with a hot stone um, like this this is granite um, it's a volcanic uh, stone and yeah i've never tried that but uh, i think that should work as a hot stone grill uh, or something like a plancher um, yeah talking <laughs> talking about planchers um, with this system i have uh, some other ideas how you can use it um, first of all i have like these um, yeah laboratory style uh, grill grates uh, you know you use that with the hot laboratory um, burners uh, to uh, uh, do research and i thought that might be suitable for this system to place for example my pots and pans let's say this is a pan or my pot um, yeah it doesn't uh, fall off or fall through this is really sturdy i can also use this as um, as a grill grate um, and also here I carry these uh, baking sheets, um, this uh, grill um, mats cut to size. So if you do vegetables or something like a fish, which is uh, yeah a little bit more watery maybe, um, then this will not drop uh, all inside of your uh, cold chambers or your heat source. So I've never tried that either um, um, we will see that in the next videos if my ideas will work out in the field um, so stay tuned <laughs> maybe consider to subscribe to my channel so uh, hit the bell and, and then you are notified when uh, i will drop another video soon so um, that would be uh, pretty nice okay let's go on i have um, Besides these grill grates, uh, I have cut to size um, stainless steel plates. Um, I tried to yeah, make some kind of patina or some uh, non-stick coverage here with some oils. It works, but uh, I haven't finished it yet. Uh, I need to do another um, uh, cycle um, to really uh, finish that off, but it can be used as a grill plunger and i have found these tiny spatulas um, 
Yeah, that these are actually Japan spatulas. Uh, I found it uh, in the net when uh, I searched for Japan spatulas. And I can use this to toss around my foods on this uh, grill grate or on this plancher. So we will see how that will work out. I tested it once, it worked, but I need to work a little bit more on the heat uh, produced by this burner. So I have to come up with some ideas and uh, try it actually in the field and grow on that. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's the idea behind it. Um, what else do we have? Um, yeah, I have actually two of them. Here's another cooker in the same style. So I can uh, actually use one with coals or one with uh, a spirit burner. Uh, or even make just a fire in here, grill something on here. Uh, while on the other one I cook up a soup or so. So it's very versatile. I can use many heat sources uh, at the same time with this system. Um, I really like it. So I <clears throat> will now um, think about how to proceed and clean up this mess. And uh, we will go on with um, my uh, preferred cooking pots. And uh, I will show you this in the next part. So let's go on with uh, these uh, pots. These are my, my preferred cooking pots, um, complete stainless steel. Um, this has a diameter of 10, this has a diameter of 14. And um, yeah, depending on what kind of needs I have, uh, I take the bigger or the smaller one. Uh, maybe hiking somewhere, uh, wanting to cook something for one person, I would just take the little one. Um, yeah, why carrying too much? I mean, stainless steel is heavy enough. This is already 992 grams, as you can see it here. And this is about 2.2 kilograms. So yeah, it's more for car camping or base camp camping um, instead of hiking and uh, trekking. Yeah, but um, this system I'm showing you here is, as I said, meant to uh, cover a full variety of possibilities. Cooking summer times, winter times, um, cooking on coal and fire, cooking on spirit uh, or alcohol. Um, I can use it directly in the fire, of course. It's everything possible. I can fry with um, my uh, bowls and uh, bake uh, with this system, even breads and cakes, and uh, I can grate, for example, um, macaroni and cheese in, in something, yeah, that I can create an oven with um, out of this system. So it's so versatile. That's why I yeah, actually don't have um, uh, a plan here on how to build up with this video. Um, I will give you the ideas throughout uh, showing you my system. So let's go on, let's talk more rock. Um, here we have the small um, cooking pot. It comes with uh, my um, burner cross stands like this one. Um, I have the burner in here. So this is the heat source and which is always in here. So it can be used as an um, self-sufficient uh, uh, system. I don't need anything else with it uh, except my eating utensils, for example. Um, here I have another pen. I yeah, talked about this already in another video. You can check that out. Uh, I think it was called uh, pot mods uh, for the bale handle here for uh, the hanging system I created. I will talk later uh, about that again. But in here I have a tiny little um, frying pan which in which I store a cleaning cloth and sponge and something to scrub the um, yeah, remains in the pot if something is burned. Um, I have some dishwashing uh, lotion um, yeah and I can use this thing also as a tiny frying pan so if there's one more pan option needed uh, I have one um, 
this fits into the pan that actually comes along with the pot. Uh, yeah, first things first. Um, so I have two frying pans in this system and I can both use with the lid, of course. In there I store this tiny uh, dishwashing cloth and that keeps it also from rattling uh, while transporting it. Yeah, we uh, come to the actual pot. Um, you see I uh, made some DIY isolation for it. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, how you can do that is uh, just search for pot cozy uh, in YouTube or on the internet and you will find how that works. Um, I don't want to talk too much here. Uh, the video is already getting very, uh, yeah, very long. So keep that a little bit cut down to most essentials. So in here I have a pot in a pot. This is actually a mug. I cut off the handles to make this fit in the bigger one. Um, in there I have a measuring cup. In there I have another measuring cup. In that I have a um, handle made from a knife chain which can be attached to the pot pretty quickly. Uh, like this uh, and you can hang it over a fire or from a tripod so yeah um, in this pot cozy I have this uh, pot system let me take that off that out of the way um, this has um, the possibility to bake with it that's why I keep this distance ring in here. Um, when you make like a fire or have a burner, put that on the burner, put the distance ring into the bigger pot, the bigger pot in the smaller pot into the bigger pot. In here you can take some muffin papers, um, yeah, as baking sheets, put your little dough bowl in here, create a little nice tasting bread just in a few minutes. Yeah, this works perfect. I've tested it and we will do that in some videos when we go outside testing this in the field. Then you will see how that works. Um, the small measuring cup, uh, I actually labeled um, that I can create milk from milk powder with one of this. Uh, it's 30 milliliters creating uh, with like 180 or 200 milliliters of pure water ready-made milk so you can just buy milk powder and um, easily store and carry that over a few weeks um, within your system and you always have milk when needed for baking or making hot chocolate or something like this yeah um, the baking papers I store in the bigger um, measuring cup which uh, measures 250 mil so with this I can bake i can boil up some water um, i can cook make a stew or something like that simple pasta of course too um, i can measure things i have baking sheets i have frying pans that's a nice little system i think um, of course you will always need something uh, in addition um, like eating utensils or a windscreen but that you just put that uh, with the um, uh, pot of your choice into your bag and you're good to go. Yeah, that's the smaller um, pot system I yeah, came up with. Uh, it's my concept. Um, of course, you could do it in any other way, but that's the way I uh, prefer to do it. So it works for me. I'm happy to carry this weight. <laughs> it's no problem at all. Um, so let's go on to the bigger one. Put that aside. Yeah, the bigger one I've also shown already. So let's take that out. It's the same pot cozy I made, just a bigger size. Oh, we've got the tiny little air bubbles in this uh, plastic uh, stuff material here. 
and I yeah created the form by um, actually putting some strong tape on it so this keeps the food warm inside of these uh, stainless steel pots um, for a long time uh, you know if you cook something outside and it's cold it will get cold pretty fast so this protects you against this a little bit yeah same system here let's take that off um, with this I have uh, a little straining um, yeah actually it was a spoon a big one if you fry something in oil you can easily take that out and I cut this had the handle off so that's the remains of it can be used as a strainer for example like this and you can strain off your pasta water or some other um, yeah means i think i will come up with in the future i take that with me so um what do we have here i have um, a non-stick pen where i cut off the handle and which perfectly fitted on the lid of this pot so i have this pen of course i have a lid which also fits of the pen that comes along with the pot in here i store some uh yeah muffin um, silicon baking forms uh, another burner with its cross stand um, some spare parts for the clips as well uh, I have it for the uh, smaller pot just as spare parts maybe they could break so I can exchange that real quick doesn't weigh a lot so just follows with me then I have uh, yeah, these tiny shot glasses, they also contain 30 milliliters of volume and I uh, can make or I know that I can make 200 milliliters of milk. Of course, they can also be used as shot glass. Then the handle for the pot, if needed, also stored in here. So this is the system, the bigger system I would take for, yeah, yeah like maybe trips I want to cook something bigger um, or to cook for more than one person um, I have two pans uh, a pot if I take the smaller pot with me I have even a, um, yeah a bigger oven option um, so it's really versatile and also this can be used um, all together in one system of course yeah, what else is in here? I got something to bake um, or to grate. So you could uh, make a little tiny lasagna or just um, some vegetables and grate it with cheese. Uh, put it in the oven like this. Uh, put that on the coals and then you have something like an oven. Um, so this can be used too. I stored it in here on the ground then i have some um, self-made aluminium tin foil balls uh, prepared i use this as um, yeah to create some distance between the actual pot which goes on the fire and the pot that will uh, contain your um, bread or, or your dough which you want to bake in here to give it a little bit more protection against the heat from um, the bottom of the outer pot because if you would place it on that it would probably yeah burn right away so this is a good option to have something as a spacer so that's why i carry a bag with these balls but you could of course use stones too but I know that this amount uh, of balls will cover the complete ground of the pot. So that's why I have it. And I don't have to search for stones all the time when going out. Yeah, that's what is in here. Um, as I said, these pots are my go-to uh, choice when I want to cook outside and be a little more um, yeah, on the lighter side. Um, I can combine everything and that's what I uh, try to show next how these things will work on the burner. Um,
this I think I don't have to explain, but uh, yeah, I show you directly. Um, this is actually the the system as I would use it. Uh, place that on here. Of course, I could place a pen on here, um, cast iron pen, for example, and use this system uh, with my pots like this. Uh, or as I've shown, do it on the wood gasifier stove. That's possible too. First, you could uh, do like this, put it on the grill grate or use uh, this one for the bigger pot and also have protection against the wind so you can uh, use it that way. Also here you can place cast iron pans. Um, since this is all stainless steel, uh, it's sturdy enough. Okay, yeah, that's actually um, one thing. Um, next I will show you my uh, bowls and my pans I use and um, come up with some other ideas how to use them and how to uh, create an oven and something like that. So I will put this away, clean up this mess and uh, then we will go off. So back again, this time with my bowl selection and with my pen selection. Um, yeah, we start with the bowls. Um, these are actually very simple. Um, uh, kitchen store bowls you sometimes get them for like one or two euros uh, I bought a big one um, I bought two yeah semi big ones uh, two in the middle size and two smaller ones so since they stack uh, together um, yeah they are bulky um, but I have a lot of possibilities and options to cook in here. For example, I could make a big salad in this one or in this one, um, make a dip in here or um, make soup in here or fry in oils, um, something in the biggest one or even in the smallest. So you can just think of what you want to cook and uh, I like these bowls a lot because they heat up very fast. They are pretty thin. Um, the wall, um, yeah, uh, the, 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 the measurements of the material, I think it's one to two millimeters. Um, yeah, they are pretty lightweight actually, but they are strong and I can use them on the coals and on the fire and yeah, I couldn't bake with it. So, um, yeah, this is my bowl selection. Let me put that back. Uh, in there I keep something like a strainer. This was actually a rice cooker. Um, uh, I took the uh, one half of it and use it with the bigger pot here um, as a steamer. So it fits perfectly in here. Uh, and also the lid fits on perfectly. So here you can, for example, cook something like potatoes in here or pasta and even steam your vegetables in here. Of course, I can use it as a strainer too. Um, and probably it should work that if you make um, this into an oven, put that in here, put your dough in, in, in the smaller um, yeah, steamer pot um, that you can bake your bread also. Uh, I've not tried it this way, but it should actually work. The concept would should actually work, I think. Well, we will see that. Okay, that's what I keep in here. It fits also neatly into the smallest bowls, so it just follows along. Then, um, I have this gr round grill grate, um, which I don't use for grilling actually, it's more like a spacer. Um, when it comes to uh, making an oven, um, I use these, how are they called, cast iron pans. Um, yeah, take a simple cast iron pan, put this um, grill grate in here. So you have something that will 
keep a distance to the bottom of the pan, which will become very hot when you use it, for example, on the stove, um, like this. Then you put in your grate. Uh, for example, you can put your dough in here then and cover it up with the biggest bowl. So that should create some kind of an oven. Um, yeah, you can, I think, um, even make a roast in here. Uh, definitely pizza. I tried that once. It worked. I will show that in another video soon. So um, that is my uh, biggest uh, cast iron pan, which can be used as a bigger oven, as a bigger oven. And then, of course, I have a smaller one here with some other pan and plate options. Let me show you that. Um, these are actually from another cook system, some cutting boards and lids um, with some strainer possibilities. So I keep them with me. If I need to cut something um, like vegetables, I can use this too. Um, then I have two um, yeah, stainless steel plates for serving the food. Or if you want to make a pizza, you can just butter that up a bit <coughs> sorry um, or oil it up a bit and put your pizza dough in here so this can be used for making pizza as well as uh, yeah plates ordinary plates well the smaller size pans um, I do have here um, here I use actually something else it's also a steamer um, you can get it at, at the supermarket sometimes you put that into a pot and steam your vegetables this will in the smaller one uh, create actually something like um, yeah also a distance uh, yeah create a distance to the hot pan so what you want to bake in here doesn't burn directly um, works this way and um, with this I use the smaller bowls cover that up and of course this should also work um, when using the smaller pens here so we will check that we will see it in the future video when we test it in the field and then uh, we will have clarity on if that really works so that's just one idea uh, in that I actually make um, it's intended to um, uh, use it as a grill or a tiny fire pit place so to protect the grounds a little bit um, from the fire yeah something I want to uh, play around with a little bit um, I don't know yet if it works but we will see put that away yeah that's actually um, yeah how I think that um, my baking oven ideas should work I think it will work um, and we will see but that's what I carry and you see you have a lot of options uh, I could put that on coals of course or use it here on uh, the spirit burner um, you can use it to fry uh, yeah there's a lot of options and possibilities um, in the morning when you would like to make some um, bacon and eggs I use this um, non-stick pen because it's nicer for eggs to have a non-stick pen um, it really works you can clean it up very fast and that's what I keep it for so then I will say um, I show you my windscreens yeah. they will look like this just ordinary protection against the wind i have two smaller ones and i have a bigger one like this it's ordinary aluminium plates so i think yeah they cost me around five to seven euro i think uh, but with these two sizes I have a good um, protection against the wind you know when you cook outside the worst that can happen that the wind is blowing the heat away from your heat source so you have to have something that protects your 
uh, cookers and um, your ovens against the wind so that it that they work efficiently yeah that's what I use as protection and um, I think next thing uh, will be the storage of warm beverages and warm meals uh, when being out in the field um, I use uh, isolated canisters which I will show you next when I have cleaned up this nest all right back in line um, or next in line <laughs> is my uh, concept about storing hot food and um, hot beverages um, yeah this is a double walled very simple isolation mug um, it keeps yeah everything warm in the cold for a pretty long time I think uh, mostly I do tea and coffee in here but you of course could fill in some soup too and keep that warm um, yeah and um, this is something I actually use uh, with my coffee system I will show you that real quick um, I carry this um, clip lock or ziplock container uh, filled with um, coffee powder in that I have a, a funnel um, a small one which I have cut to size uh, let's not make a mess pretty full so how that works is I actually take a coffee filter put that in here place that on here and just boil my coffee um, that's the most simple thing to do and I don't need any fancy coffee making machine outdoors uh, what works at home works uh, of, of course in the field very nice so why change that I like this type of coffee so I do it that way um, then I have a bigger container even with a lid you could drink out uh, you have a little uh, opening that you can pour uh, the hot beverage out close it up and it takes uh, around I think 300 milliliters and this is 200 milliliters um, or 250 and 300 I think this is 200 I don't know doesn't matter but that's nice if I make a bigger coffee and put that aside and whenever I want to sip uh, I have a hot drink in here um, yeah then when it comes to food oh I made a coffee mess when it comes to food storage um, sometimes it's so that you uh, yeah especially with me I cook more than I need <laughs> most of the time and um, so I thought about storing the hot food for the uh, yeah for the use throughout the day so I have a container with 500 milliliters and uh, I think 900 or 1000 milliliters in this one um, they work like this you have a little tiny bowl you have a isolated lid with such a steam uh, relief knot um, knob on it like this and press and then the hot air will come out um, yeah it looks like this they are made of aluminium and uh, they are double walled and they keep my foods um, hot up to 10 to 12 hours uh, yeah of course it's um, depending on the conditions outside in extreme cold of course it will cool down a lot quicker but I had it once out in uh, fall time uh, it was close to zero degrees Celsius and I kept my food warm for at least eight hours uh, you should always first fill some hot boiling water for a few minutes in here um, and let it heat up and if you then fill your hot uh, food in it it will stay a lot uh, warm a lot longer um, yeah you have to prepare that in a way and that's the most efficient use you can get out of it yeah so I use these two and you are good to go throughout the day so you have a lot of uh, ready-made food you have uh, your hot drinks stored so this is how I do this outside next thing will be my cooking accessories so let me 
clean that mess up uh, and see you then. So back with uh, my cooking accessories. Um, yeah, first of all, safety first. Um, I have these cooking gloves. Um, yeah, they are, were very cheap. I bought them somewhere on Amazon. Um, they are all the same actually. Um, these should withstand heat up to um, I think 800 degrees. Um, I don't know if they will. We will see. I used them once for grilling um, to move around something real quick which is very hot. For this I think they are suitable. So don't burn yourself. Use some gloves. I use these. Then of course I have um, for preparing something uh, foods that I need to cut or chop uh, a chopping board and a sharp knife. Then I have um, yeah I show you first the bigger bag. In here I store um, the bigger parts. For example. Mm, let's take out the biggest first. This is uh, the big soup spoon uh, I carry or serving spoon. Yeah, uh, can also be used as a weapon, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's very sturdy and I, I like this um, little bit smaller uh, type of um, uh, design uh, because that is actually perfect for filling my um, my isolation canisters they will fit the opening uh, very well so I like this and take this with me of course I can use it uh, on the campfire too in my bigger pots so this is what I carry for base camp cooking um, then I have some uh, yeah, what is this? That are actually skewers. Um, big ones. Uh, yeah, I don't have to explain that. You can just lay that over the fire or on your grill rack and uh, use your skewers that way. Then I carry a big wooden spatula. Um, no need to explain that. Nor do I have to explain how that works. This is the grill tongues I, I use, uh, yeah, even for moving um, coals in the coal bed or rearranging um, the wood in the campfire. So that's the tongues I use. I have a smaller wooden spoon uh, for my pots. Then when I come to oil frying, uh, I use this um, perforated spoon actually. Um, yeah, it works perfect to let the oils drip off and uh, for example if you do spring rolls um, this is a must-have or you use the tongues that works of course too so this is something I like to carry then what else do we have here I have some actually two sets of these chopsticks these are the metal ones. Sometimes I use them also for uh, preparing uh, pizza dough or bread dough. So I work, use them also as a stir frying tool. So I love these things. And of course I like to eat with chopsticks too. Um, what else do we have? Um, I have this very slim and big grater. Um, I think it's actually used for creating uh, Spätzle, as you say in German. Um, but you can, of course, grate uh, onions, uh, carrots, um, vegetables in general. Uh, I, I like it because it's very thin and not too heavy. So it fits in this bag, so I take it along. Then um, I have these yeah actually these were some um, chopsticks too i cut off the ends so that i can fit in my um, smaller skewers yeah like this hang it over the uh, uh, burner or, or over your grill and yeah no need to explain this 
So I got another size of uh, skewers with me and these can actually also be used as blowing um, device when you want to uh, yeah, power up your coals or your campfire. So to give it some more airflow, uh, you can use this too. So that's in here. Uh, what else do we have? I have a long spoon. Um, sometimes when you go out with trekking meals, you know, these bags, they come in, um, they are pretty deep uh, and you need a long spoon. So I use this titanium long spoon for it. Uh, it works very well and I like the taste uh, or the feeling of this spoon itself. It's very nicely polished titanium and um, the design and the shape. It's really fun to eat with. I like it. So that's in here. Uh, next would be my uh, selection of silicon spatulas. Um, I have actually a big one. Uh, yeah, that's for the use in the bigger pans and the bigger bowls and uh, pots. Uh, I have a smaller one uh, that looks somewhat more like a spoon. Uh, I have the big one also in small and I have something like a brush so I can marinate my um, steaks or um, cover any uh, egg yolk on my breads or on the uh, baking um, food um, I need to prepare. So this is also very nice. It's also very strong. Um, I think this will, yeah, this will work. So take this with me. Uh, what's next or what's last is actually a big ferro rod. Um, yeah, if I run out of any yeah, fuel or um, lighter fuel or if my lighting device won't work, I take the big um, fire rod. Yeah, works like this. Uh, we all know how that works, so have that in here. And that was the big bag. Um, and now we will dig into my smaller um, accessory pack. Um, let me put that away real quick and see you then. Okay, this is my little um, cooking accessory pack. Um, let me show what's inside. So what do we have in here? First of all, I got my pot grabber tongue. This came along with another cooking system, so I don't want to burn my fingers and I gra grab my pots, tongues, um, uh, pans and bowls so without burning me. Uh, I have a peeler. I have two tiny spatulas. Um, I actually have another fire rod, put that aside. Uh, I have something like a little tongue, so I can uh, you know, toss around some uh, meats or uh, vegetables on the grill. Um, I have a DIY made from an antenna, an old one, um, a blow rod. For uh, yeah, blow into blowing into the fire, giving and feeding it more oxygen. I have a little uh, how you call that whisk, um, something to mix your uh, breakfast eggs with, or make some sauce or a dip. Then I have a spare clip to close something, you know, some bags uh, and reseal them. Uh, I actually uh, carry two, um, yeah, what is it, grater, I think. Um, this can be used for cheese or something like carrots and onions. Um, the smaller one I prefer to use with Parmesan cheese. Uh, so you have, yeah, this kind of uh, little grating options. Um, then I have um, a ginger grater. Um, it's pretty sharp actually. Uh, it works fine, but it takes a long time to uh, prepare the ginger with. But sometimes you 
want to have it uh, finely chopped or grated so I use this tool it fits in here so I carry it with me and then I got two sets of eating utensils like spoons uh, knives uh, forks um, yeah sometimes you know um, you might um, invite somebody to eat with you so I have two sets of these then I have some tiny um, yeah some tiny skewers to actually prepare um, something I don't know how to say it in English in Germany you say or in France you say roulade uh, so some rolled up meat you can fix the meat or um, prepare some uh, grilled chicken with it uh, so they fit in here so I take it with me so with this I have a also good option to cook with um, and expand my possibilities so next thing I think I will show you my uh, other grill and fire cooking options just a few things that I add to the system um, let me clean that up and uh, I'll be back soon so back with my grill utensils that I uh, additionally carry um, let's start with this this is actually a welding mat um, it's rated up to 1000 degrees Celsius um, yeah if you use any type of cooker you can place it here um, this is for example the um, steamer um, device for into the pots but uh, it can be used as a yeah, pit fire bowl or campfire bowl you could place it directly on that mat and uh, yeah protect the ground against the heat and the flames so protection is always good um, it doesn't weigh a lot so it's in the box speaking of making campfires um, yeah or grilling on coals um, what I sometimes do is use this foldable grill grate um, and put that over uh, the fire or over the grill or directly into the coals but I use it more as a pot stand uh, not too much as a grill because I don't like grills that only have the rods in one uh, direction uh, I prefer actually more these crossed types because my food won't fall through into the fire so that happened on <laughs> a few times um, so I use this actually more than a pot or a pan stand um, yeah place this actually directly into the coal bed Put your pans um, or pots on here and just use it as if you would uh, use it on your camping stove. Yeah? That's what I use this for. It's actually pretty strong. Should uh, yeah, carry up to 8 or 10 kilograms. It didn't break yet, so I use it for that um, purpose. Yeah, and with this, as I said, you can uh, actually uh make a portable campfire um and uh, this protects a little bit the ground so that's what i do in campfires sometimes um yeah you know it's uh, a little bit uh, difficult to keep the fire uh, alive so you have to uh, move the logs around and uh, yeah maybe um, play a little bit with the charcoal to get the right amount of heat you need and for this i use uh, this foldable uh, grill grate which i really like because everything goes very fast and quick just put your steaks or fish or vegetables or whatever you want to grill in here season it up close it and you have something like yeah, a stick uh, or a long handle um, to hold it over the fire you can uh, place it beside the fire upside down for example you can quickly turn everything without uh, that everything will fall apart on you um, yeah I like this um, it's bulky I know uh, and I actually don't like this long handle but it works very very well uh, so it fits in the box uh, and it just uh, comes with me so this is my grill options um, I think now we cover um, food and uh, water storage let me clean this up again and i'll be back soon 
So back with the water supply when car camping or cooking outdoors, I prefer to uh, have big canisters. This is a five liter one and this is a three liter one. And this also has something like a, um, yeah, a device to uh, better pour out the water with. Um, so I know I have like eight liters of water uh, for me, uh, if I do a lot outside um, concerning uh, cooking and uh, doing the dishes and everything, I think eight liters will serve me for two days. So that's what I transport my water with uh, when car camping, for example. Um, and in here, you know, sometimes uh, when you cook outdoors, it's better to have things already prepared. Um, vegetables chopped, um, your food prepared um, so that you can enjoy the outdoor cooking without having to do everything uh, in the field. So that would take too much time sometimes and if you film it for example then you need uh, uh, yeah you need to save time where you can. So this is something um, they are actually ordinary food canisters in there were ready-made salads um, It's from the supermarket you can get uh, very cheap and uh, yeah, I always keep them clean them up and um, They serve me uh, For food preparation. So when I go out I fill my ready-made and ready chopped uh, vegetables in here like yeah, vegetables, carrots, onions. Um, you could also do fruit salads or whatever. Uh, just um, do whatever you like. I like these. They are waterproof. Uh, they have a tight sealing lid. So like this. So no fluids will um, come out. And uh, yeah, that's what I recycle them for. In here goes my food, um, as well as these. I got five of the bigger ones and five of the smaller ones. Um, these also serve as uh, yeah, storage containers. Um, and of course you can ready uh, cooked food also fill later on uh, and take it with you back home. So I really like these canisters and never throw them away. Um, that's the purpose for food and water. Um, yeah, next thing um, would be some smaller stuff that will uh, follow uh, with me in my cooking equipment. Um, I show you what I have to do the dishes and a little bit um, in addition to my spice kit. That's what coming up next. I put that away and I will be back soon. Okay, back with the things I do my dishes with. Um, I have, um, first of all, a container. It was a very cheap one I once bought. Um, I don't know, even know the name, but it works. It's a strong, sturdy um, plastic. And uh, it fits, I think, 10 liters. Uh, it's foldable and, yeah. Um, I used it on the trip even to wash myself with so put some hot water in here and Efficiently use it for everything you need it to use it for for doing the dishes for washing yourself um, Doing your personal hygiene. It's perfect. Uh, you can just um, Yeah um, Dry it off very quick and um, it's, uh, as you saw, pretty uh, small when you have packed it. Uh, it's a little bit fiddly sometimes because the plastic is so strong. So do it like this and just fold it up. That's how I do it. Put it and fix with, with some uh, hair straps and you're good to go. So what? Next, um, I have in this little box, I have some um, microfiber towels um, to dry off anything that I need to quickly have packed um, and where I can't wait to 
to let it air dry especially with steel parts i use i wipe them off before i pack them so that's why i have these in here then i have some um yeah wilderness soap solution for doing the dishes that's eco-friendly um, and very efficient you can also use it to you uh, wash yourself um, next is some metal sponge thingy uh, yeah it's like a sponge it's a uh, cold uh, wired metal i don't know also i will show you uh, you can use this to scrape your pots after uh, cooking yeah, to remove any residues from the cooking or um, anything burnt on the bottom of your pot. Um, this will work very well. So in addition, I have um, like this little sponge. Actually, I cut them in two. So I have two smaller ones and one in uh, stock. Um, it has an abrasive side and a soft side, so these two things will get your pots and pans really clean. Then I have another bigger microfiber towel in here. Um, actually, that's what I uh, rest uh, everything I have washed um, to dry out. Uh, I just lay that on the, on the ground or on the table and put everything on here, let it dry. Yeah, that's uh, my dishwashing solution. Um, last but not least are these um, little uh, yeah, um, tubes. In here I have these tiny towels. They are dry uh, and compressed towels. If you put water on it, they will um, quickly uh, raise in size and you can use it uh, as a cleaning towel or clean your face for hygiene um, or for cleaning your dishes. I like this method and uh, they are really efficient. They are also uh, eco-friendly, environmentally friendly um, and I have 12 pieces in here, 12 pieces in here that should be enough for doing the dishes and even cleaning yourself. Um, and if they are unfolded, they have like this size, I think even bigger and yeah, uh, you could dry them also out and reuse them, but I don't do that. Um, yeah, but that's my solution for doing the dishes outdoors. Okay, now we dig into the last parts of my system. Um, I show you uh, what uh, I pack along with my spices um, as consumables. Um, yeah, that's what's next. I clean that up. I'll be back soon. All right. Um, back with my uh, consumables. Um, I already showed you my um, spice kit. I added some um, yeah, laurel leaves to it um, because I like making soups and um, stews and something like this uh, to do with these leaves. Yeah, so I just added them uh, into my spice kit. And I have another video on this, so I don't go too uh, far into this kit, but the rest you haven't seen yet and I will show you now. So this was my spices. In addition to this, um, I have, when it comes to frying steaks uh, or cooking in the pans, um, I use uh, clarified butter or, yeah, I, it's not ghee, but uh, it's similar. Uh, clarified butter, um, can be heated up very hot and you have this buttery taste which I like when uh, frying steaks so I have uh, it stored in here and yeah you can store it at uh, room temperature it's actually no problem it won't go rancid on you too fast so that's what I take then I showed you uh, in the beginning um, my coffee pack uh, I said I used a ordinary 
funnel which I cut off the bottom part of it, uh, hang that into a cup, use these uh, coffee filters or tea filters uh, for filtering the coffee and that's quick and easy, uh, no hassle, no extra device, so I do it that way. Um, of course I carry some tea bags, uh, a nice selection of teas I like, uh, safe and dry in another uh, clip lock box. Then I do have in this one, uh, in this one box I have some baking um, powder, I have some um, vanilla sugar um, and I also have some um, ready-made mixture for making salad dressings. So sometimes I like to do it quick and easy, just do a little bit of olive oil and water and mix it up, you can eat that. It's not the tastiest, but it's okay sometimes. So I take that with me and in uh, addition to the baking powder, I of course have ready packed um, packs of um, baking uh, flour. Um, this is the type 550, which I really like to use for uh, doing pizza dough. Um, yeah, I packed it already um, in these Ziploc bags. I have some additional Ziploc bags to, uh, yeah, to kind of knitting the dough of uh, preparing the dough in the bag so you don't have these messy fingers. Um, yeah, but you could also use just a bowl and uh, some chopsticks and do it that way. Um, some kind of a mess you always have. So, but I'm prepared. Um, in that, I also store some baking uh, paper sheets and yeah, readily packed in here for at least four days of uh, baking. Then I have. Uh, milk powder in here. I have labeled it with my measurements in here. I have like uh, six times 50 grams of milk powder. Uh, that's 90 grams and with this I can uh, create ready-made milk um, 900 milliliter. So almost one liter of milk I have in this tiny container. Um, yeah, it was a um, uh, it was a, bo uh, a container, uh, it contained actually vitamin pills uh, from the drugstore, so I keep that and use it for this purpose. Um, and you can slip this into uh, sometimes your mugs or into your um, isolation canisters too, to keep, uh, to save some space, storage space. Um, yeah, that's what I do. So I have milk. Then in here I got powdered uh, vegetable bouillon uh, to prepare soups and to pimp up your foods, spice up your foods. That's what I keep in here. Then I have some hot chocolate powder in here. So sometimes you crave something uh, sweet or tasty at night to warm you up. Uh, then I take some uh, milk powder and chocolate powder, doing some hot chocolate. In here, uh, of course, I had no sugar in my spice kit and sugar sometimes yeah, uh, is used as quick energy. Um, I love to drink coffee with uh, a little bit of sugar, so I have also a box with sugar. That's actually all I need uh, for cooking and uh, doing uh, beverages outside uh, and baking I have here. And uh, in addition, I throw into my uh, kitchen box some other uh, baking paper sheets and a, a strong um, version of this grilling tin foil, aluminum foil. Uh, I take a whole roll, so I'm actually pretty nicely equipped. Um, as I said, I can do everything, cook on fire, cook on any other type of heat sources. Um, I can bake, I can fry, I can cook, I can actually do everything with this kitchen that I can do in my home kitchen. So um, yeah, I hope you liked it. Um, I hope you found it anything um, helpful or interesting if so maybe you 
consider to subscribe to my channel, then you will see how I will use this in the future in the field, creating my tasty meals, uh, having fun outdoors and maybe give me a thumbs up. I'll be happy about that. And if you have any questions, just write it down in the comments. Uh, I be happy to answer your questions. So yeah, that's my complete cooking system. And I think uh, we will leave it at that. And uh, maybe in the future, I will add some parts or will uh, throw some parts out. We will see how that works. But for the beginning, I think this is a good uh, basis. So have a nice day. See you next time, uh, my friends. And uh, thank you for watching.